Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at a specific aspect of break-even analysis that's really useful, particularly if you want to use break-even calculations to work out the profit of a business. This concept is called the margin of safety. Now, a quick reminder, uh, hopefully this is familiar to you, if not a useful reminder of how we calculate the, the break-even output, the number of units at which total revenues of the business equals total costs. In other words, the point at which a business is not making a loss, but neither is it making a profit, where total revenues equals total costs. And uh, you need to be familiar, of course, in terms of how break-even analysis is constructed. You need to understand how revenues are calculated. Revenues are the value of sales made by a business over a particular period, and you calculate revenues by multiplying the selling price per unit times by the number of units sold. And of course, costs in break-even analysis, very importantly, are broken down into two different types of costs. Variable costs are those that vary in relation to output, units produced, units sold. Fixed costs are the costs that do not vary in relation to output. And to calculate total costs, we have to calculate uh, variable costs plus fixed costs. Now, what I'll do is I'll just put a brief uh, illustration of the break-even output calculation on the screen and build it up so that we can then introduce, using this data, this concept called the margin of safety. In this example that we're going to put on the screen and work through, it's a very simple one. There's one product, product A. It is sold for £20 per unit, £20 each. Each unit has a variable cost of £8 each. And this business has fixed costs of £25,000 per month. So if you were given that information, uh, you could work out uh, by calculating revenue, variable costs, fixed costs, and total costs. You could work out what the break-even output is. So let's have a go. First thing to do is to calculate the revenues. So we multiply the unit sold on the left there by £20 per unit uh, to give the total revenues. Next, we calculate variable costs. Again, this is an easy calculation. It's the variable cost per unit, for example, uh, £8 times by the unit sold. At the first line of the table, 1,000 units, that gives you £8,000 worth of variable costs. So, at 1,000 units sold, our contribution, if you remember that key term, our contribution is £20,000 worth of revenue less variable cost of £8,000. So our contribution, if I had a column for contribution, will be £12,000. Our fixed costs do not vary with output. So despite the increase in the units sold on the left-hand column, our fixed costs are fixed. Therefore, they are £25,000, whatever the level of output. So to calculate total costs, we add together variable costs plus the fixed costs to give that column there that's now highlighted in red. So, for example, when we sell a thousand units, our total costs are £33,000, which comprises £25,000 worth of fixed costs plus the £8,000 worth of variable costs. And of course, as we know, to calculate a profit or loss, we take total revenue less total costs and see what the number comes out at. And there it is. So we can see that at 1,000 units sold, we make a loss of £13,000 because our revenue of £20,000 was not enough to cover our total costs of £33,000. In other words, at 1,000 units sold, we have not yet broken even. And have we broken even at 2,000 units? Uh, well, it looks like not quite. We've made a loss of £1,000. So we've even at 2,000 units, we're not quite yet at the break-even output. However... Certainly at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 units, we have started to generate a profit, which must mean that we have exceeded the break-even output. Now, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 units sold is the break-even output. And of course, we know there's a very useful formula we can use to calculate what that, what that is. To calculate the break-even output, you divide fixed costs by the contribution per unit. Fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit. Perhaps the most important formula you'll ever use in break-even. 
So in our case, our fixed costs are £25,000 per month. And we know that the contribution per unit is um, £20 of revenue less eight pounds of variable costs so every unit we sell contributes 12 pounds towards our fixed costs and how many of those do we need to cover the fixed costs we divide one by the other so we need to sell i've just rounded up very briefly uh, to 2084 units per month to reach the break-even output 2084 now that then sets us up nicely to understand what's known as the margin of safety. It's a funny sounding term, but it's a really useful and a very important one. The margin of safety is the difference in units between what we actually produce or sell and what the break-even output is. So if we go back, we saw in our example that the break-even output for this business is 2,084 units per month. And we know that the margin of safety is the difference between that break-even output of 2084 and the actual output. Now, let's just illustrate that briefly. Imagine that we have actual outputs of 5,000 units and break-even output of 7,500. Is that more than the break-even output? Well, clearly not. It's 2,500 units below the break-even output. However, if we produce 10,000 units and the break-even output was 7,500 units, we would have more units than we need to break even, and therefore the margin of safety is positive, 2,500. So remember that the margin of safety is the difference between the actual units that you produce or sell and the break-even output. And ideally, in any business, you're trying to find a positive margin of safety. Because, and this is the key point to remember, a business that operates with a positive margin of safety is profitable. On the flip side, a negative margin of safety means that the business is making losses. And I'm going to show you how you can prove that. But that's a really important point to remember. In order to be profitable, you have to have a positive margin of safety. In other words, what you're actually selling or producing is greater than the break-even output. And the beauty of this is that you could always prove the profit of, business by, profit of the business by using what we call to do the magic formula. Profit is the margin of safety in units times by the contribution per unit. You don't believe me? Let's have a look. Profit is the margin of safety in units times by the contribution per unit. So let's uh, let's go back uh, to uh, our product A example. Do you remember that one a few minutes ago? We were selling a product for £20. Our fixed cost was £25,000. And we knew that somewhere between 2000 and 3000 was the break-even output. And we calculated it at, I think it was 2084, didn't we, as the break-even output. Now, what happens if our actual sales are 4,000 units? Now, that would suggest a positive margin of safety, wouldn't it? 4,000 units is higher than 2084. Does that prove... Does that create a profit of £23,000? Let's have a look. The profit is the margin of safety, which in this case is 4,000 units, take away our break-even output. So our margin of safety is 1,916 units, times by the contribution per unit, which if you remember was £20 less £8 variable cost. It was £12 per unit, wasn't it? So profit should be 1916 units times by 12 pounds per unit. And if you do the calculations, that comes out at 22,992 pounds. In other words, rounded up as the table suggested a profit of 23,000 pounds. Now, in a, a subsequent video, when we look at how you can use break-even analysis to help manage the business and improve profitability, we will look at how you can improve the margin of safety. But just for now, just remember, the margin of safety is the difference between the actual output and the break-even output. So you can see that in terms of improving or widening the margin of safety, which of course has the effect of increasing profit, there's a, a, a bunch of things you can do. You could try to increase the contribution per unit, perhaps by raising selling prices or by finding uh, cheaper variable costs. You could try to lower the break-even output 
either by lowering those fixed costs or by turning some fixed costs into variable costs. And of course, you can do much more by trying to increase the actual output what you sell. That has that will have the effect normally of widening or improving the margin of safety. But we'll look at that when we come to using break-even analysis as a way of uh, analysing how a business can improve its profitability. So just to recap, the margin of safety is a really useful concept in break-even analysis. It's the difference between what you actually produce or sell and the break-even outputs. So this has been a short revision topic video on uh, one part of break-even analysis, the margin of safety.